Now you should be aware that there are other camera setup and viewing tools in MicroStation, and I want to show you one of those right now. I want you to go down to the visualization toolbox here and click and hold on the camera setup icon. That will pop up the list of tools in that tool frame. And let's open this as a toolbox. This is called the cameras toolbox. You already know how to use the setup camera, but I'm interested now in the define camera. So I'm going to click on that and we'll have a look at the settings in a moment. But before we do, I want to go a little deeper into the two basic ways that a view sees the design. Now in the first case, which we have here right now, where a camera is not installed, then the view itself becomes the camera view. So the display settings you make for a view, i.e. zoom, rotation, perspective, etc., define the camera settings, even though the virtual camera is not installed. In this case, the define camera tool that we've just opened allows you to change the view's display, even if you don't have a camera installed. On the other hand, if you have installed a virtual camera in a view using the setup camera tool, then the define camera settings will allow you to control what the camera sees. Now in practice, using a virtual camera is a little more intuitive when setting up a view for rendering, since it's more easy to visualize the function of a camera. Well, let's have a quick look at the tool settings for the define camera tool, which we see here. Along the top, we have the various view control options. We have pan, we have pan horizontal, pan vertical, roll, dolly elevate, dolly, focal length of the lens, lens view angles, and pan dolly. Now all of these are sort of technical terms, I guess, but describe how a camera can be moved. If you have any interest in the movie business, then these are very common terms. So let's see how this works in practice. I don't have a virtual camera installed at the moment. So we'll work obviously in the isometric view. And it would be helpful if you had the other three views open too, as I do. Let's put some perspective into the isometric view first. So we'll start the perspective tool. And there's a little bit of perspective. Now we can still use the wheel to move my elements around the view. But now I'm going to start to use my tools over here. Right now it's on pan. And if I click in the view, I can now pan in both directions my elements around the screen. Data point, back. Let's try just plain dolly. Now I can go backwards and forwards and slightly too, but this is essentially moving forward with the camera and backward with the camera and so on. So you can experiment with the various tools here. But what I want to show you is this. In the front view, if I zoom out significantly, here you'll see the representation of how the view is being seen by the non-existent view camera. If you look closely, you'll see the elements are here. And we see a projection of the virtual camera in this direction. The red, green and blue circles are merely the axes about which the camera is oriented. You can edit these orientations by moving the actual handles here. And you can see how it's changing in the isometric view as I do this. Let's leave that where it was. And if I go to my camera settings here and change, say, the projection, make that two point, watch what happens in the front. We see a different projection, three point, different projection again, and parallel, different projection again. You won't be using this type of setting in the remainder of the course. It's a little too complex for what we need. But if you require very accurate photorealistic views, then you might want to use these systems. OK, now I'm going to get back to my basic views. I'm going to get rid of perspective. And let's make this back to where it was, which is a right isometric view. And let's now install a virtual camera. Now I'm going to maximize this instead. And let's throw a camera in. I've got construction on. I'm going to draw a simple construction line just to tell me where my camera is. And let's bring this out about seven foot or so, whatever that is in metric. Let's do that. Let's go up about six foot or so. Doesn't matter exactly what the dimensions are. Let's install a camera now. Now we go to the setup camera tool. We click in the view. We select that. And I'm going to go to the top of the cone there. 
So here now is our virtual camera view with a camera installed. And then go back to this and we can do exactly the same things in here with just the plain view in control. So again, practice that too. You do often want to make fine adjustments to a particular rendering situation. Now one final point here, when you place a light cell in the design, you see the physical cell in the design as an icon. Now this is not so when you place the camera as we just did. There's no physical camera cell or other marker to define its presence. Moreover, if you use the view controls to change a view where there is a camera already set, that camera view is lost. And you have to place the camera again if you want to reproduce that same camera view. But the solution is to make a saved view of the camera view. You can then recall that view anytime you like, which will bring back the original camera with all its settings. And this is typically what you would do. So be prepared to be making quite a few saved views as we continue. So as always, please practice this. Make sure you understand it reasonably well. Even though we won't be using it a lot, we will still be making adjustments to some of the larger renderings that we're going to be doing.